start our live stream on YouTube. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. So I guess we'll get started. Welcome everybody. And this is our first interview event for our interview series. Um, we're really excited for tonight. We're gonna have three special dental students coming in talking about their interview experience, the process of how they you know, prepared. Um, and today it's gonna be mostly tips and tricks and all about what an interview really entails and how to kind of prepare for that. Um, so for, before we start, um, we just ask if you have any questions, kind of leave them at the end. Uh, and we'll definitely go through all of that. Um, so we're really start excited. So we're gonna get started. Okay, so before we get started, the quick little disclaimer. So the information you will view is the product of Pre-Dental Association's members research. This is not a sure way to pass your interview, but should be taken more as information tips, tricks, and advice to help you ace your interviews. Uh, we encourage all of our participants to conduct their own research when preparing for their own interviews. Uh, for our volunteers in the chat, uh, you just stay tuned until the end of the presentation. We'll have a link uh, in the chat at the end uh, where you can register for your hours. Right, so this is just a quick little agenda of what our presentation entails. I'll just go through them one by one. So we'll have, we'll talk about the types of interviews, how to prepare for your interviews, how to have a good first impression. We'll go through common interview questions, how to prepare for online interviews, how to prepare for professional answers, how to proactively practice, what you should and what you should not say, uh, preparation resources, and then we'll finish with a couple of guest speakers. Right, so let's start with the different types of interview styles. Uh, we have panel interviews, we have multiple mini interviews or MMI, and we have the traditional one-on-one -on -one interviews. So let's start with the panel interviews. The panel interview will entail multiple uh, faculty, staff members, and dental students interviewing you. So this will be more, more than one person, probably usually two to five or two to six uh, faculty or dental students interviewing you. Um, this form of interview tests how you speak to multiple people at once and how you can balance the amount of time you give to each person. So multiple eyes, so you'll have multiple eyes on you, which can be scary for a lot of people. So we have some tips where you can use uh, to leave a good first impression. So the first tip is the 80-20 rule. Uh, what that rule means is that uh, whoever gives you the question to answer, you give them 80% of your full attention, your 80% of your eye contact, um, bodily behaviors like your posture, your hand gestures, and your speech and then 20% goes to the rest of the panel. So whenever appropriate, you turn to the rest of the panel, uh, speak to them, but you bring back your attention to the main person who to uh, gave you your uh, question. Uh, an important aspect to this is to make sure to give everyone attention in the panel, uh, not just the person, not just the laser on the person that is speaking to you. It's important to acknowledge everyone. Um, and not to favor anyone based on their titles. Uh, everyone is equal and important in the panel, so you should equally uh, give everyone your attention. And it's also important to bring a copy of your resume for everyone in the panel, so when you uh, talk about your own experiences, they can uh, check your resume or um, follow along accordingly. Now for multiple mini interviews, um, these consist of multiple independent stations set up with independent interviewers. In this interview style, candidates move through station to station answering questions, and questions can range from ethical dilemmas, standard interview questions, or scenarios depicted with patients. In this interview style, you can create multiple first impressions. 
So if you flunk one station, it is not the end of the world because you have multiple other clean slates where you can try again. MMIs test your professionalism, your ability to communicate new thoughts and not just memorized answers and your critical thinking abilities. So some tips for the MMI, uh, you should show empathy in your answers. Remember that one day you will be a future dental professional and that putting yourself in your patient's shoes is a huge pillar of dentistry. Another tip is that you should hold your ethical stance. It is important to acknowledge the importance and opinions of others, but you should show that you are confident in where you stand on a subject. Demonstrate that you understand the point of view of others, but explain thoroughly your own. And finally, we have the one-on-one -on -one traditional. Uh, these are the traditional interview styles that we are familiar of, um, usually in a workplace setting. Uh, be prepared for these. All of the attention will be on you. So try your best not to fidget. Um, like I, I know I struggle with tapping my leg or shaking my leg. So that's something uh, you should like, you know, take into consideration and can try to control. And a tip for this one is to try to find a topic you have in common with the interviewer to talk about. So this piques the interest of the interviewer. And if you can get the interviewer to connect with you personally, it shows your ability to speak and connect with others, which is a good trait in candidates. Um, eye contact is obviously very important. You can look away slightly for a little bit, but always make sure you come right back to uh, maintaining eye contact. It shows a good level of confidence. and. No matter the interview, no matter what it is, traditional panel or multi, make sure you smile with your mouth and your eyes. So this actually helps you relax a little bit and your interviewer ex is expecting you to be nervous. So showing that you can keep a smile and eye contact with a stranger, um, as that is what you will be doing in your professional career, it shows confidence, which is critical in the candidate. Right, now we have two different styles of uh, interviews. We have open book and we have closed book. For open book interviews, the interviewer already has your applica application, your resume and your grades. They may have already went through it, so they're familiar with who you are as a person. So in that case, you, you need to understand your own application and resume very, very well, like the back of your hand, because they, you don't want to be caught off guard or you don't want to have an error in your application and you know, like, Look, look, you know, you don't want to come off wrong. So you need to know your resume very well. You need to know what they know about you. And you have to be prepared to expand on what is on your application already and not just uh, repeat what's on it. Closed book is when interviewers do not know anything about you. They don't have your application. They don't have your resume or your grades. Uh, because of that, you can steer the path of your interview however you want. And you can highlight what you want to highlight about your application. But it is always a good idea to bring a copy of your resume for the interviewer. I'm sure they will appreciate it. And whenever you're going off about your um, personal achievements, they can follow along as well. So it's important to know your school's interview style so you can prepare accordingly. Uh, for example, University of Toronto's interview style this year is panel, which is different from last year's, which was MMI. So it's a big, big change, a huge change that you need to be aware of. So you can find this out by searching your um, your desired school's um, website, and it should be listed there. So some things to do beforehand, before your interview. It's very critical that you prepare, you have everything ready, you know your resume, you um, are confident in your speech, you know what you're gonna say, you know what you'll bring up. Uh, to control stress is important. You don't wanna be too stressed out. Your mind may be racing, you want to control that. So have a full night's of rest and have a breakfast in the morning. Uh, be prepared to smile. So if you do have breakfast, make sure you bring some floss because you don't want to smile and have some food stuck in your teeth. And you know, that's not the best uh, image. So be prepared to smile a lot. Uh, work on your confidence and steady paced speech. You want to be clear, but you don't want to talk too fast, but you don't want to talk too slow either. 
Um, right, so also work on your eye contact. It shows confidence. Prepare your professional attire because uh, right when you step into the door, you will be judged. So the first thing that they will see is what you are wearing and your outfit. So make sure you are wearing something professional uh, where you look clean and put together in. Uh, and the main two things are know your application or resume very well, like the back of your hand. You want to know what they know about you and you want to know what you can highlight about yourself and know your strengths and your weaknesses. Right, so things to do during the interview. So dress properly once you're about to attend the job interview. So, um, right, you want to dress clean, uh, look put together. Um, consider your manner. So don't fidget, uh, keep eye contact. Don't be too casual, but don't be too stiff, right? You can, uh, don't use too much hand gestures, but use just the right amount. Minimize, minimize your movement. Uh, do not look away when answering questions because this shows a lack of confidence in your questions. So you want to maintain eye contact. Looking away for a little bit, maybe a second or half a second is okay to gather your thoughts, but always make sure you bring it back. And do not take too long when answering certain questions. You don't want to go off on uh, any unnecessary tangents. And it just shows that you're not really prepared about your answers. So yeah, don't do that either. So here we just have some common uh, possible questions like tell me about yourself, what accomplishments, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, are you most proud of? Uh, tell me about a disappointment you have experienced. Tell me about your research, your shadowing experiences, your clinical volunteering experiences. These are all very um, important things to be prepared of and know uh, beforehand before your interview. You will most likely be asked uh, about your experience. So make sure you know about those. And where do you see yourself in 10 years? And these are just common questions that you should have down pat uh, 100% before your interview. All right. Well, thank you, Navesh, for that. So like he went over, these are just the basic kind of how to prepare. But now it's my turn to tell you more in-depth tips and tricks on how to really prepare for your doctor school interviews. So there's kind of six easy steps that you should take to prepare for your Zoom interview. So the number one thing is to, of course, include your photo as your profile. So it's not really necessary to have a pro like a professional headshot, but it, it is highly recommended to have that on your Zoom account just so you know they can see you, they can match the name to the face. Um, and you can ask someone to take you know, your photo using a cell phone. So it's very easy to just take a nice photo. Next is um, consider adding your name and your preferred gender. So there's some schools that they do request you to um, include your, per your gender pronouns as well. So she, her, his, you know, hers, they, them, he, his, him. Um, so it's really important to kind of acknowledge that. Um, and it's just a small gesture as well. Next is to kind of get in the zone physically. So before the interview, um, kind of complete a test run with your internet, the video's working, the audio's working, make sure you record kind of like a short video to confirm that your microphone is working properly, there's no background noise, um, and then try it with and without headphones, like with AirPods, with different types of uh, headphones and see which is the best quality. Next is location. So location is very key. Um, you know, you want to have a place that has natural lighting, doesn't really have shadows on your face, um, because it can really be distracting as well. Okay. So how to prepare and slash answer your questions. So the number one thing is to use examples. So when you're backing up what you're saying, it's really important. So instead of saying like, oh, I'm really passionate about communicating, like add on to that, like what did you do to demonstrate that through like your extracurriculars? Um, the next is take time to reflect on your critical moments in life and stories that reflect true your true passion and drive in dentistry. And just make a mental note of all the different scenarios that illustrate who you really are. Next is, you know, take a moment to say, you know, if you are hit with a question that you're not really sure, like it's a fine, you don't have to answer it right away. Just say, you know, 
that is an interesting question. Can I, you know, think about that for a second and just kind of gather your thoughts? Obviously, you don't want to take too long, <laughs> but it's good to kind of just formulate an answer by just taking a few seconds to really um, think about what you're going to say before, you know, just blurring out something. Next is to know your primary and secondary applications thoroughly. So like what Navesha is like, you have to know your personal statement, your application, your resume at the back of your hand. So describe what was done to learn more about like the profession. So you were shadowing, you were doing work experience. Um, and these can be asked directly from your application. So but the interviewer can say, oh, look at this, you know, shadowing experience. What did you learn? So you kind of have to know at the back of your hand what you did. And lastly, it's to acknowledge the challenges of dentistry and to speak articulately, not robotic, not scripted, like really show who you are by the way that you're speaking to your interviewer. Okay. So how to practice solo. So a good kind of way to practice solo interviewing um, is to set up your phone and record yourself and just read the first question. So give yourself maybe two minutes to formulate the answer. Use a notebook if you need to, and just kind of have five minutes to respond. Um, talk to your phone as if it's the interviewer, you know, talk about it might be, you know, it is a little weird, but it's going to, you know, come naturally after. And then once you do that, really look into the recording and just ask things to yourself. Like, did I answer the question? Did I speak enough? Did I, you know, was I saying um or ah or all of that? Um, did you ramble? Were you sitting up straight? Did you have good posture? Was your chin up? Um, and obviously it's going to be <laughs> a little awkward, but that's totally fine. As long as you're showing improvement, that's really what matters. Um, and you're going to be in a much better place before. Okay. Next is, so when should you start preparing for interviews? So everyone is different in the way that they prepare. Some prepare right at the beginning <laughs> of submitting their application start. You know, they prepare right once they get the interview. So it really depends. The most important thing is that you practice, you know, you have practice questions, you start searching up techniques and resources. That's really important. So it's really based off of you and how you prefer preparing for it. Okay. So you're probably going to think, well, how am I going to not freeze out? So the first kind of few things to do is pause before answering. This really gives you time to think and organize your thoughts. You have to prepare well. You really have to know yourself, the school that you're interviewing at. And you don't need to chain, you know, you don't have to chase perfection. Like Just be you, be natural, um, actively listen to the questions and really trust your preparation. And be resilient. The problem is often not the freeze itself, but the impact your mentality for the rest of your interview. So you're feeling, oh, I messed up. Like I don't want to, you know, ruin the interview. Like your that mentality is, you know, really going to affect the way that you finish off the interview. So you have to be resilient to that. And the last resort is, you know, repeat the question back or ask the interviewer to repeat the last question. So that's like the last resort. If you really want to, you know, just prepare yourself for a few more seconds. Okay, so these are the most types of questions you're going to be hearing during the interview. The number one question probably, well, obviously the Y dentistry, which we'll talk after, but it's tell me about yourself. So you have to take this opportunity to just simply introduce yourself. What makes you you? What's your name? What's your hobby? Where are you from? And why are you excited for that interview? And this is the number one question you're going to hear. And it's, yes, it's very simple to your personal statement, but that's the point. They really want to see, like, do you know your application? Do you, have, do you have a clear reason of wanting to become a dentist? And this also adds personality and passion to your personal statement as well. Then you're probably going to get, well, why this school? Why do you want to come to this school as a dental student? So you have to do your research. That's the number one thing. You start by reading the school's mission statement. See what they're really all about. Is there certain programs, certain organizations that you want to be a part of at that school specifically? Is there any unique opportunities do they offer? Any cool research opportunities or just outreach? Is that something that you want to be a part of? And how is their curriculum structured? Is that what you really want to do? And then you're going to hear, well, tell me about a time you dot, dot, dot. So it's 
when you showed leadership, when you failed, when you worked on a team. So this really shows a school that you're able to articulate your thoughts while allowing you to talk about your experience. So to answer this question, you just have to make a list of all of the meaningful experiences. And I do that myself. Like once I have like a memorable experience, whether it's with a patient or just in life in general, I write that thing down and just make sure like I have a list of memorable experiences, like a bank of stories that I can talk about. And that leads to my last point, just having that, you know, bank of stories, it's really going to help you with that question. Like tell me about a time. So you can easily just off the bat, think of that answer and just go for it. Okay. So this is the most important slide I think you guys need to know. So you're going to be getting the why dentistry. And most of the time, of course, you want to help people, but they don't want to hear that question. They don't want to hear that answer. It's a huge red flag. So I'm going to go over why this is a red flag and how you kind of want to avoid just saying, I want to help people. So one of the questions, one of the um, tips is any profession is helping people. So for example, police officers, they're providing law and order. Teachers are providing education. Uh, construction workers, you know, helping to build something. So how does that really differentiate you from any other profession? So for example, in my shadowing sessions that we have, we really ask our students, why do you want to be a dentist? And I've heard, I want to help people. And I say, no, you have to answer specifically why. What makes you different? Why do you want to help people in the dental field specifically, not just in any other field? Why not doctor, nurse, police officer, teacher? Why? Like why? Those are doing <laughs> helping people as well. And it comes such a cliche. Like you, and you don't want to show that to your interviewers. What have you done that shows that you want to help people? Have you done volunteer work? Did you involve yourself in certain organizations and initiatives? Have you helped less fortunate people than you? If not, then what do you mean that, that you really want to help people? That's really important. And it's for easy for people to say, I want to help people, help people, but not do anything about it. So you really need to dive deep into why do you want to help people, especially in the dental field. So show examples. What have you done that showcases that you want to help people? Have you, again, helped? at a food bank, at, you know, different organizations. And dentistry is not all about helping, just helping people. Of course it is. But there's so many skills and aspects to the profession itself. And, you know, when people say, oh, you want to help people, it's not really genuine. And it's not going to show your interest. And it's going to show that you're not really experienced or well-versed in the profession, what it really entails. And, you know, every <laughs> profession helps people. So... That is something you really need to just drill it in your head. Like, why do you want to be helping people in the dental field specifically? So these are things that you can mention, you know, why do you want to be in dentistry and do you want to be a dentist? So you can talk about your fascination for science. So dentistry has its foundations in science. So there's an interest in the human body and in cells, etc. And it's really important because you know, that's where all the dental knowledge is from. So you can talk about why and how you have an interest in science and what you've done to really demonstrate that. And also having an interest in serving communities and helping others. Again, <laughs> talking about the last slide, helping people. You know, the massive part of being a dentist is working with patients and giving them genuine, you know, compassionate, empathetic, you know, being with them. So here you kind of want to talk about giving back to the community if you have any experiences with helping others or doing any volunteer work. And the last one is, well, why dentistry is different from other professions. So, you know, kind of talking about the two other points itself, like it's related to all different kind of health fields. So with nursing, with medicine, with anything. So you really want to talk about the more analytical nature, the critical thinking skills, the, the decision making, the problem solving skills. Um, the, you know, for example, you're going to be needing to find a diagnosis, like the lifetime of learning, the teaching, the understanding aspects that come with being a, a dentist and not just like all the professions have. And here's are things that are, you know, like a big no-no, like don't say, oh, you know, the financial status and I'm going to get a lot of money. Like that's a big no, like do not talk about that. 
Um, and don't be saying, oh, dentistry is better than, you know, medicine or nursing, or all of that. And don't say you want to be a dentist just because, you know, a family member of yours is a dentist. Like, you really need to reflect and impact and explain why this impacts you. So again, like I said before, I'm going to drill it in your head this entire presentation. When you say, I want to help people, it's very cliche and very overused. You want to find other ways and examples of why you want to help people and what have you done that really demonstrates that. So you're probably going to hear, well, why do you want to be in dentistry and, you know, not medicine? So here are some things that you can say about why you want to be in the field. So you can definitely say that you respect all other allied, allied health professions too. You respect nurses, dentists, like, doctors, everybody. Um, but you want to do dentistry because of, for example, like reasons like they're more the more analytical, the critical thinking nature of being a dentist. For example, you're finding a diagnosis is like being <laughs> a detective of some sort. Um, and same with the lifelong learning. So with dentistry, it's constantly evolving. So it's going to be always evolving. You're going to be learning all the time. And you're going to be having teaching opportunities to teach you know, younger dental students and even pre-dentals, um, as well as helping patients understand what's really happening in their mouth and just in their bodies in general and just in simpler terms. And again, the, you know, time-pressured, fast-paced environment in like emergency situations, you really need to make big decisions that could affect the outcome of somebody's like overall health and life potentially. And not just the dental medicine, you know, science side of it, but there's an aspect of treating patients, um, and, but also understanding them from a biopsychosocial approach. So you're not just going to be, it's all about dentistry, all that. You're going to be really seeing people and treating people and really approaching them in a unique, different way. Okay, so things not to say when you get this, you know, type of question. Do not say dentists are better than any other professionals. Don't say that because of the money or the social status you're going to get. Um, and, and just don't say anything demeaning to any other profession because we're all going to be a part of like a multidisciplinary. So everyone is equal, like it's all equal in being important and good patient care. So this is really important. Do not demean any other profession when you get this question. Okay, so I think we are actually early on schedule. Um, so in the meantime, if you guys have any questions right now, we will take them and then uh, we'll kind of take a pause and go back into um, more resources and our speakers. I'm just waiting for our speakers to get here. Um, and then we'll go over our other um, events that are coming <laughs> shortly. Okay, so I'm going to see if we have any questions. If you guys have a question, you can feel free to put your hand up. And if you guys have any questions as well on YouTube, ask them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to just stop. Let me see if I can share my screen. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anybody have any questions so far? Um, there we go. Okay, so YouTube, do you have any questions so far? <laughs> Anybody? I'm just going to. There we go. Okay, so we have a question. How many copies of your resume would you suggest bringing to a panel? That's a really good question. I think just having a few copies um, on hand would be, you know, really good. Not 20 different copies, maybe just maybe like five, four to five, I would suggest that being a good option. Okay. Kizal, uh, what's your favorite kind of interview style? Just curious. My favorite interview style. Um, would be more of the traditional and panel, just so you're able to speak, um, you know, just speak openly. It's not really a pressured kind of way. 
Okay, we have more questions here. Um, many of my stories and experiences are political. Would you advise against mentioning this in my interviews? That's very interesting. Maybe we can kind of talk about that privately and I can kind of help you with that. Um, for virtual interviews, would it be more difficult to try and make eye contact with multiple interviewers since you're looking through a single camera? That is a great question. I don't think it should be difficult because you're going to be seeing the entire, you know, the panelists. So kind of talking directly to the camera should be okay. Okay, so we have, would, you, would we ever be asked if their dental school is their first choice? There may be a chance you might get that. And it's just good to kind of be honest as well. Why should we not say that the money is not the reason? I think it's a huge factor in honest answer. So with this, like I said, dentistry is not just about the money. If you really want to go into dentistry for the money, that is a big issue, in my opinion. Um, dentistry is much more than the money. And people that go through just the money and have no passion behind it, it's just a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. So if you want to talk about that privately, of course, we can definitely do that. How do you bring a resume to a virtual interview? Um, I'm pretty sure for virtual interviews, they will have that. But it's also good to, again, know your application off the back of your hand. Like, you have to know that as well. Okay. Would it be recommended to mention personal family impacts in your reason for wanting to be a dentist? Of course, if that's the reason that you want to be a dentist, like, Again, it's that why dentistry is basically reiterating your personal statement. So if you know your personal statement and you have talked about that, for sure, like you can definitely mention that again. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to actually talk about our next, in, like our next event. So give me one second and I will pull that up. Okay. So tomorrow we are going to be having a um, company called Astroff. They're going to be also having a workshop and they're going to be going over stuff that we kind of not just missed here, but kind of avoiding the mistakes that many candidates make when they're answering challenging questions. They're going to help you understand the steps to develop a strategy for responding to responding to different types of interview questions. And they're going to also teach you how to learn the structure to advance to an advanced interview response. So sign up for that. That is a separate link. It's on our Instagram page. It's in our link in bio, PreDentalYU. Definitely sign up for that. It's really great. They have amazing professionals that are going to be helping you with that um, and going over more in depth. Uh, kind of tactics. Should we mention that we want to help pe uh, to help people at all in our gender interview? Like, I obviously want to help people, but more than that, I, I mean, as again, like I said, as long as you have proof, not proof, but examples that you do want to help people, that just shows like, okay, this person generally wants to help people. They have done stuff in the past, their volunteer work, their experiences show that they generally want to help people. I hope that answers your question, Sheriff. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys time. If you need to sign up for tomorrow's session, it's at 7 p.m. It's also on Zoom. Um, and again, it's a really great workshop. They're going to be teaching you a lot of great tactics as well, more in-depth. Um, and so definitely sign up for that. And then next week, we have our mock interviews. So we know that a lot of interviews are, you know, going to be coming up soon. So on next week from Sunday to Saturday, you will be able to have a mock interview with one of our execs, so myself included. Um, we're going to be kind of helping you, not helping you, but kind of giving you a question. And you're going to have time to fully respond to that. And we're going to give you feedback on your delivery. So, of course, we're not professionals. We're not, you know, dental missions <laughs> interviewers. We're just going to be teaching you, like, okay, maybe you are saying a lot of ums or you're not giving me eye contact. And that really helps. Um, we are going to be having a deadline for this. So, if you want to sign up, again, our link is in our bio. 
for the mock interviews. The deadline for this is this Friday at 11.59 p.m. So at midnight, it's going to be um, kind of closed. So we do ask you guys to sign up for, you know, one slot. Um, we're just trying to see and make it more accessible for more students to be able to have that opportunity. If you would like for me to help you out um, with mock interviews, by all means, but I'm going to be doing it on Thursdays. So Thursday, if you want to kind of have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, I can kind of give you some help and some advice. By all means, you can definitely do that. Okay. I'm going to also, uh, anybody have any more questions? Any more questions? Great. Okay. Will there be a workshop regarding personal statements? That's a great question, Nilu. Um, we are trying to plan something for that. So right now we're kind of focusing on more uh, interviews and DATs. Once it kind of gets to the May, uh, approaching May, which is more of the American dental school cycle opening, then we can definitely do like a personal statement kind of workshop for that, for sure. One more. Okay. Also, before, well, I kind of wanted to leave it to the end after our speakers. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you guys something that's really going to help you out. So I created a booklet for all these practice questions that are really going to help you out. So if you are on a computer screen and you have your phone, I want you to open up your camera and scan like open it up and put it facing this qr code so i think you'll see it right there <laughs> this will get you to our discord and when you click on our discord it's going to tell you to pick a role so what that means is you have to press the canadian or the american um, flag and this will give you access to all of our channels on discord and i created a interview um, section where you can ask all questions about interviews interview preps, interview outfits, everything like that. Um, and so this, when you go to interview prep, if you see that, um, that when you go on the pinned messages, so on the top, there's a, like a push pin, press that. And that's going to give you um, all of these great resources. So this will have at the very bottom, you'll see Gazelle's Dental School Interview Practice Booklet. So I put in the time. I helped out, kind of did my research. And these are some of the questions that I helped one of our speakers who's going to be coming ace his interview question, like interview, you know, process. Um, so take a look at that. I can definitely help you guys out. Um, if you want to have a kind of one-on-one -on -one session with me, by all means, I'm really happy to do that. Thursday, if you want to do it Thursday, the, I forget what date it is. I think it's the 10th. That will be a great day for me to do one-on-ones with you guys if you want to do that. And we'll dive more deep into the um, so yeah, definitely get that booklet that's going to help you out. Join um, the different, well, a lot of people are joining. There's going to be a lot of different um, resources in that Discord as well. So I highly encourage you to watch the Discord tutorial that I made. And that's going to show you everything that we've created to help you guys out with applications, interviews, DAT prep, everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're just going to have a maybe five minutes of our interest speakers are going to be here. So if you guys have any more questions, um, we will have maybe a quick break if you need to. And I'm so sorry, the speakers are just coming back from lab. So they're just taking a few minutes just walking back home. So I hope this was beneficial for you guys. For closed book online interviews, should we bring our interviews as well? Again, with that, um, I'm pretty sure you don't need to bring your resume because they will already have that. Um, but again, it's also good. Um, again, it's also good to know your resume at the back of the hand. So you have to know that as well. Uh, let's see, for Western, yeah, also wondering that, Abdul, because I think that's how Western will be this year. 
Yeah, with Western, I myself am confused with what they're doing with that. Um, but I think it's going to be, um, again, beneficial to just have copies on the side, just in case, but it's online. So um, I think we should be fine. Okay, here. Yeah. I'm just going to. Would we be able to send up the money one time slot? Okay. Awesome. Great. So again, if you guys would like to have a mock interview, the link is on our pre-dental uh, Instagram page, pre-dental YU. The link is in our bio. You press that, you pick a time, um, and one of them will be assigned it to our executive members that will help you based off your delivery again. Um, so for the mock interview, is there a list of questions or is it random? There is a list of questions. Um, and it's going to be, of course, we're going to ask you why dentistry, because you're going to hear that, of course. Um, and so we're going to just, you know, throw some questions in there just to kind of prepare you um, one way. So, of course, you have to know, tell me about yourself, why dentistry, um, why this school, all this kind of small thing. Will we get the list beforehand? So that's a great question. It's good to get my interview booklet. Hint, hint. So we're going to use some questions from that booklet as well, because these are going to be the top questions that you're going to be hearing a lot. So definitely look in that booklet. You're going to get all of the questions there. Oh, it's not going to be every question, but again, I put in some time. There's going to be a lot of questions that can kind of prepare you. Um, and if you would like to do a mock interview, again, go into our Instagram page, link in our bio, and you can just pick a date and time. Mine is on Thursday specifically, so if you want to have a chance with me, there's going to be a little G beside the time slot that you can hopefully have a one-on-one -on -one with me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, UFT is going to be an open book on Zoom as well, so for sure. Again, you have to know your applications and you have to know why you want to be in dentistry. Please do not say it for the money, for the love of God. <laughs> do not say for the money. Okay, so. so how is my YouTube attendees? Are you guys good? You guys have any questions? I'm just kind of going over through the chat. My Zoom members, are you doing? Do you have any questions as well? Just a few more minutes and our lovely speakers are going to be coming. I'm really excited for you guys to hear from them. Um, and if you guys want, like on our Discord, we do have a channel, like a voice channel where you guys can, well, not voice, it's also video. So it's also like a Zoom. So you guys can hop in there, talk, like have one-on-ones as well. Not one-on-ones, but like a conference and <laughs> have preparations there as well. Okay. So I am going to ask you guys quickly in the chat. Or you can message me privately if you're on Zoom. Why do you want to go into dentistry? And I will kind of rate your answer <laughs> one way or another based off of, I guess, what you think. What do you guys say? Let's do that quick exercise. That's going to be the number one thing. So make sure you do that. So I want you guys right on YouTube, on the chat, and on Zoom, tell me why you want to go into dentistry. And this will be very interesting to hear. Also, in the meantime, uh, we have a in-person shadowing event coming on February 22nd. And that is a very in-depth shadow. Let me emphasize that. You're not going to get this type of shadowing any dental offices ever. And this is going to be amazing. <laughs> so I hope you guys can come. There is a few spots left and you can also join the waiting list. That way we can, um, if someone cancels, we can definitely reach out to you guys and even for previous, like the next events. Um, all of that information is going to be on our Instagram page. 
everything is on the link in bio. Okay. So I hope you guys got the Discord. I think we are almost good to go. To make people feel better about themselves and their facial appearance. Great. Okay, perfect. I would like to go into dentistry because I noticed an increase in insecurities due to the impact of social media, media and I feel that helping people with their smiles really does make an impact on confidence levels, and I want to make that difference. That's great. Perfect. Okay. Awesome, we're getting a lot of responses coming in. Okay. So, let me just kind of click here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I told the speakers to come at 8 p.m. I didn't think we'd be um, done early. I'm a fast speaker. I think that's why. <laughs> okay. Great, so you guys are filling out the forms. Awesome, good job. Perfect. If you guys want to have like a have a audio question, you can join the Zoom if you have the link. Um, if the people on YouTube want the link as well, maybe I'll just give you guys pop in. So let me know what you guys think. YouTube, let me know if you guys want the link to or Zoom, so you can chat with us here. Okay, I want to be a dentist because I was a dental assistant for seven years. I worked as a dental assistant around the world for three years. Awesome. I love working with the community, providing support, educating people on the oral cavity. I love dentistry as it has continuing education and research. Barbara, that is amazing. Great. Excellent job. Excellent. Okay, so you guys want to join Zoom. I think We'll give you, um, yeah. Oh, wait. One second. The Google form for which? The Google form. Okay, so let me guys show you guys. Oh, we got a great answer. Hold on. Okay, this is brief, but growing up, I was in competitive basketball and participated in various training sessions that required hands-on learning. I learned from this that true, I truly enjoy working with my hands, and I also learned the best by applying these skills. As I studied medical science and undergrad and master's, I realized that dentistry is a field where I can truly apply my scientific learning in a practical setting. Combined with this, well, a lot of people are coming Combined with this, okay, everyone's coming. <laughs> um, I was also part of the organization that addressed uh, oral health vulnerable. Uh, oral, wait, I was also part of the organization that addressed oral health for uh, vulnerable population. Toronto. This sparked my passion to advocate for marginalized communities, and I believe dentistry is the field that will allow me to advocate. Or, uh, advocate for patients or help. That's awesome. That's amazing. Great job, Daniel. Okay, so for um, I'm so confused. Uh, which link is everyone asking about for? So there was a sign up sheet for this, and we closed it a few days ago. So, but everyone can join if you want. <laughs> Um, okay, is the shadowing event virtual? No, Yasmin. This is a very in-person, in-depth shadowing experience. So, hope you guys can make it. How long should our answer for this question be? That's a good question, William. So, you obviously don't want to ramble. You want to kind of get straight to the point. Um, oh, our speakers are coming in now. Um, you obviously want to get straight to the point and, you know, not ramble. Really want to talk about you know, why dentistry because of this, this, and this, and how you're able to kind of make an impact and a difference in this world. If you finish in the response for MMI early, do you, what do you recommend doing the remainder of time? Cindy, that's a great question. Um, I 
feel like you should use the full amount of time that's given to you. Because if you finish, sorry, excuse me. If you finish the response in like two seconds, like two minutes, um, and you didn't really get straight to the point, I think I honestly recommend using all of the time. Like that's given to you. For the mock interview, how many questions will you be asking? How much time do we have with you one on one and with other uh, or one other pre dental helpers? So for the mock interviews, you will be getting 30 minutes with us. Um, we will be asking kind of varied questions. Of course, the number one is why dentistry and your speakers here, sorry. Um, and we're going to kind of ask you more questions that you should know off the top of your head. Awesome. Okay, so we do actually have just one speaker. The other two are going to be are stuck with patients, but that's fine. Um, so we are going to bring, I'm going to just, one second. I'm going to, oh, go back, go back. Perfect. Okay. I am going to have Casey. He is an NYU student. And he is going to be talking about his interview process, how he prepared, um, and he's going to give you all of that. So I'm going to get Casey. Hold me. Where are you? <laughs> okay. Give me one second. Oh, there he is. I have to admit him in the room first. Perfect. Perfect. Let's get Casey. There you are. Okay, Casey, you should be good to go. I'm going to stop my screen sharing. Hey, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Hi, guys. I'm Casey. I'm a D1 at NYU. I'm a very close friend of Gazelle's. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? They can't really talk right now, but. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Gazelle? Hey. I'm doing well. Here, let me put you as a spotlight so everyone can see. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, Casey, if you would like to just talk about your experience, um, kind of maybe your process before the interviews, after interviews, how you prepared for it, um, that'd be great. Cool. So um, just a little background about me, guys. Uh, I'm a non-traditional, uh, I was a non-traditional applicant. Um, I graduated from U of T in 2016, 2017. Um, my grades weren't the best, so I kind of took a couple years off to just like really reevaluate everything. Because um, I know, as you guys know, it's a very competitive process, right? So there was a lot of emotions that went through my mind. Uh, was I like good enough? Was I going to get in? Um, it actually took me three cycles to get in. Um, but it's all about perseverance and you know how much you really love the career and um if you really put like forward your best foot you will definitely get in you just have to have an open mind and be willing to really um what's the word i'm looking for uh like like open your scope of schools that you're going to apply to so just for like background um i applied to about like 15 schools um, they were all in the U.S. I did a lot of research um, to see especially what schools were um, open and willing to take Canadian applicants because it's a little bit different in the States. Um, there's private dental schools, as you know, or state-owned. Um, the state ones uh, favor state residents. Uh, the private ones are a little bit more open. Um, so I think that's the first thing that you really need to hammer down during the application process is try to see what schools are willing to take international students, but then also take like an in-depth look at their program, what they offer and see how that fits with you. Um, once that's all done and get it, you get your, your application out, um, it's really all about the preparation, like Gazelle said. So um, I applied on the first day that the cycle opened. And um, I did not receive any interviews till January, so post-December interviews. Um, and that means, like, while that was going on, because um, I didn't really have any interviews, I wasn't really looking at preparing yet. I was focusing on finishing my, um, my prereqs, uh, because when I was in um, 
U of T, I wasn't really looking to go to American schools. And they have a lot of different prerequisites uh, between Canadian and dental schools. Um, my first interview that came was at Turo. Uh, and then that's when I really started to collab with Gazelle because, you know, you guys know Gazelle's very um, into the field and she's involved a lot. So you guys have a really good resource uh, knowing Gazelle. So um, what we did essentially, I started off um, looking on, I don't know if you guys use SDN, uh, Studio Dental Network. Even if you don't use SDN, uh, Reddit and Google are very good sources uh, for typical dental interview, um, interview questions. So I kind of just made a little like list of the top questions. Um, so for example, why do you wanna to come to NYU? Why dentistry? These are two questions that you guys are gonna get asked no matter where you go. It's, it's the field, why do you wanna go there? What, like, why do you wanna become a dentist? So I made a little <clears throat> um, list of all these questions. I think I had like 20 or so, and then Gazelle started to uh, add on. And then what I started with was I started with little jot notes. I did little like um, points that came from the top of my head, how I could answer this question. And then I hammered it down and I made it sentences, uh, like cohesive sentences. And then I would, me and Gazelle would like practice every day. Um, we would go on a Zoom call, we would spend hours. She would just take a list of questions and then she would just ask me randomly. And we would go back and forth. Um, I had an interview at Turo. I had an interview at NYU. Both those schools, if you guys apply to them, are very similar processes. Uh, Turo is a one-on-one -on -one interview with one faculty. Um, it was very chill. I think uh, Turo was like the most laid back interview. They did a really good job of making you feel comfortable and welcome. Um, basic questions, like I said, off SDN and Reddit. So why dentistry? Uh, why do you wanna to come to our program? Um, sorry, if you guys see me look to the side, it's because I have the question, like I have the questions on the side. Um, let's see, if not dentistry, what would you be doing? Uh, why are you choosing dentistry over medicine? Um, if you're not selected this cycle, what are your following steps going to be? So that's another very critical question. They wanna see how dedicated you are. If you're just kinda gonna pack, pack your bags and hey, let's see if we can get into something else. Um, what else? Stress. So how do you cope with stress? Major one. So as you guys know, when you get into dental school, it's you hit the ground running. Um, there's no more like nice little syllabus week where on your first week, they're like, here are your assignments. Um, so stress is a major thing. Um, and they want to see what you like to do outside of school because dentistry is not all of who you are, right? They want to see who you are as a whole. You have that dental aspect and then you have you. So definitely think about that question. Um, why are you so interested in this program? So every school wants to know why you want to go there, right? Uh, how will you contribute to our dental school? Um, it's not all about grades. Uh, I, like I said, I was not the, the top student in undergrad. Um, I think I had like a 3.2 or 3.3 CGPA. Um, so they want to know how you're going to contribute other than like didactics. Um, and then um, I think there were actually some ethical questions. Uh, so I had one from NYU where they asked um, if I've ever seen anything unethical or made me feel very uncomfortable and what I did. So for example, um, I, I talked about my experience. So after U of T, I went to York uh, to finish the prerequisites. Like I said, this is where I met Gazelle, the uh, YU Dental Group. And um, I spoke about how uh, I was taking physics too. And um, that was the COVID year. So we like shut down in March and um, we transitioned to online exams. And then, um, there was one student who actually got his hands on like, uh, like a copy of the actual exam and started sending them out. And um, yeah, so I had to talk about that. And then I had to, I told, the, I, I told the interviewer how I approached that person, told them it was unethical, you know, you should get rid of these tests. Uh, you can get into a lot of trouble. So 
be prepared for ethical questions, um, especially at my experience at NYU. NYU has a like a specific course on ethics and professionalism, and I think a lot of the other schools do. So be sure to incorporate that into uh, your thought process. Um, but yeah, so besides these questions, um, how was my, my process? Um, let me see. So I really spoke about the Torah one. The NYU one is, like I said, just as similar, but with them, you actually meet, uh, you do two interviews. Um, so you do the first one with a doctor, could be anyone from D1 to D4, it could be a OMFS, um, it could be an a endodontist, a periodontist. Uh, very similar questions. Um, they do like to ask about uh, if you've taken any breaks, they'll ask you to explain that. So they asked me why I took so, so many years off. Um, what else? And then after that one, it's about 20 minutes. Then you go interview with a admissions um, uh, admissions committee member. So not, you know, not a faculty, but they are in the admissions departments. And um, that one's a lot more relaxed, I'd say. They're really just trying to get to know you. So they're not really asking any dental questions. Um, it's just like, what do you like to do outside of school? You know, what do you do for stress? Uh, um, yeah. Um, other than that, that's really how my interview process went. I ended up getting waitlisted at Turo, but NYU like ex accepted me a couple of days later. And that's where we are today. Awesome, thank you, Casey. Um, do you have any maybe other tips and tricks that you would, I guess? Yeah, so anyone? definitely, like I said, so the way that I did it, where I did a little jot notes and then I rehearsed it, make it not seem rehearsed though. That's the main yes. thing. Yes, that's what we went over <laughs> yeah. a lot. And I remember when we would do mock interviews, sometimes you would get flustered. And I said, okay, just take a break, gather your thoughts, and we'll go over it. And so we would just, like you said, we'd go through, I would throw him random questions, same questions, because he would memorize it kind of, based off the order he wrote everything down, but I would kind of throw in different questions. And that's how we really prepared. And he did it to the point where he was natural. He didn't, you know, mess up. He articulated very well. So it was a long process and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you again, Giselle. Giselle. Like I said, guys, Giselle's a lifesaver. I, I don't think I would have uh, been here without her help. It was a lot <laughs> of conversation that went into it. Um, and piggybacking on uh, what she was saying. So if you guys get flustered during the interview, that's okay, take your breath. And it's also okay to ask for a minute to collect your thoughts, which is what I had to do. And they actually respect that because yeah. they know how nervous you are and they want to see how you, how you recover when you trip like that or if you stumble like that, right? Um, a lot of students won't take that break and they'll just, uh, verbal diarrhea essentially and just say and they might say the, the, the wrong thing so take your time they you, you got interviewed for a reason right they want you there they saw something so just show who you are um another tip make your answers personable uh that was one big thing that uh, gazelle and i worked on a lot because they're gonna hear 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 students say, oh my gosh, you know, NYU is amazing because it's so diverse and you're gonna meet so many patients and you're gonna, you know, get exposed to all of that. You really need to include your own experiences. Um, so like for stress, um, everybody's gonna say they work out and exercise, right? But why do you choose that? So for me, you know, like one of my, like my role models and my, my mentors is, uh, is Kobe. I guess I'll know this because I incorporated it into like all my assets. Yes. Yeah. Um, but use that. Use something that's really personal and that comes close to your heart. I think that's one of the main things um, that's really important because then the person interviewing you will see, wow, this really extends past dentistry, you know, and this is why they love the field because of so and so or such and such. Awesome. So we have a question here. It says, how long did you practice and how much a day? I think we practiced for like four hours straight some days. Yeah, it's, uh, it was really dependent on uh, how our schedule was. But if we had the time, we were going every day. Yeah, um, every, yeah it was pretty much like a weekly practice fully. Um, 
four hours sometimes back to back <laughs> till like midnight we would practice yeah um, they were really late sessions oh. yes but I, I had i really wanted him to perfect the answers and he went over it you know i gave him some tips and tricks of like how to approach a question um and again remember something i told you was you know even though it's stressful or something always be grateful for whatever happened to you so if you want to maybe elaborate more on that we can see what i'm talking about <laughs> yes um because so being grateful is a, is a very important thing because we are all, all of you guys here are applicants, right? You guys are all gonna be future dentists one day. We are all in a situation uh, where there are so many millions of people that they dream of every single day. Just think about, you know, maybe your country back home. Think about somebody who's probably 100% more intelligent than you are, but doesn't have the resources to apply, to, you know, move over to a new country. And you guys do have that opportunity, right? You have all those resources, you were able to apply. So one thing that like, like Gazelle and I really talked about was um, the, the, a lot of times when, when dental students get in, they forget all about that, right? You know, cool, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna be a dentist. Then all the courses start to roll in, all the exams start to roll in. And then you just see, just, just you know, you see on Instagram, oh my God, I hate dental school. Oh my gosh, this course sucks. Oh my gosh, whatever, whatever. The main thing is you are in a position to change a lot of people's lives in a very good way because you guys know oral health isn't just oral health. It's the whole systemic health. You might have a problem with your gums and inflammation, but that could actually cause, you know, arrhythmias or you can get a stroke, right? So you're in a position to make people's lives better, make your life better, make your family's life better. Don't lose track of that. Um, and I think if you realize every single day how blessed you are to wake up, to be in this process, keep that with you. Because, um, yeah, a lot of people lose sight of that. It's, it's kind of sad to see, but it's such a great experience. You know, um, like I said, dental school hits the ground running. It will definitely test you in terms of, you know, your mental and your physical energy because, you know, not everybody gets into dental school. So it's a, it's a huge, huge change from, uh, from undergrad. So just remember, just always stay grateful. It's definitely a very good thing to remember. And one thing that like is all hammered into my head. She like, it was so cute. We did like a little Google doc and she put like little like quotes and like little yeah. pictures of, yeah. you know, pray and be grateful. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have a few more questions. One is, what did you do? What do you do to relax and de-stress? And what was your experience like with an online interview? With a what was the online online interview? Okay. Um, so the first part for me, um, I like I said, I like to work out, but my number one thing is basketball. So if I feel stressed, I just need to go to a, a nearby the outdoor indoor court when it's warm and not snowing outside um other than that it's 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 typical you know like I, I like to hang with my family I like to hang with my dog I miss him a lot because I'm I couldn't take him here with me to New York um what else anything really to when you guys get to where you guys get to um just leaving the apartment <laughs> will give you uh relaxation because some days especially with how everything is still. So we're kind of hybrid right now. Uh, all, all our lectures are online, uh, except when we need to go to clinic and uh, when we have bench lab. So our Wednesdays are like eight to six of just straight lectures. So that's a really stressful time. So just get out of your house, go for a walk, you know, treat yourself, get a coffee, you know, get an ice cream. Um, just simple things like that. Be honest to them. What you like to genuinely do. Don't try to, number one mistake that I think a lot of students do is they try to find an answer that the doctor or the interviewer wants to hear. They just want to hear what you want to say from your heart. Don't look at all these other people's answers, right? We're all different. So I think that's the, the one thing. Just be honest. Whatever you like to do for, for relaxation. Um, and then for the online interview, uh, what was the question? How did I deal with it? Or how? Yeah, I... like what was your experience with the online interview? Um, I know, I remember your internet wasn't well at your house, so you went to your sister's house. So that's important. <laughs> yes, guys, please make sure you have great internet. Um, 
like Azil said, I had to go because we were doing our Zoom interviews and I would keep like crashing. Yeah. Another thing is make sure you have a great internet connection. Um, other than that, it was very unorthodox. It's, it's weird talking to a screenwriter because the number one thing that you really need to, um, not really number one thing, but an important thing to remember is to maintain eye contact, right? So you always got to stare at this camera. Don't let your eyes drift and then start looking at yourself or looking at the interviewer at the, at the mini screen there. You have to just stare at that. So I and I would catch him. I would be like, stop yeah. looking at your wall. Look at me. And he would start again. And I, I nailed him. You have to make eye contact, you guys. Very yeah. important. So I think that's the hardest thing. Um, but if you just get into the, the mindset of just thinking this is just another conversation, um, it'll, be, it'll be good. Like the hardest thing, like for me, like I said, was, was maintaining the eye contact and only staring at that camera. Um, I think there was a little difficulty with uh, one of the NYU profs' internet. So then there was like a little delay. He'd stop talking and then I'd start talking, but they, yeah, it just wasn't in sync. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was pretty fun. You get to be in the comfort of your own home. You know, you, like I said, be grateful. You don't have to travel to a city, spend on a hotel, spend on, you know, going out. It's, a pretty good process right this is what you guys dream for you needed this interview this interview is to showcase who you are outside of a paper show how personal you are um like i said it's a great experience awesome so we have three more questions it says how to make your oh we've got a lot of questions it says how to make your answers not sound rehearsed slash robotic from pra from of practicing lots pace definitely pace is one of them Taking breaths um, between your words. <laughs> take breaths, exactly. And this is where I say to make your, um, your answers personable. Because if it's personable, you don't need to memorize it, right? Um, you take little experiences that you remember and you just go with it. Um, and when you make your answers personable, you'll feel your heart like, like palpating when you're telling your answers. Because it means a lot to you, right? So I've, I've incorporated... Um, so this is going back on some like relaxing. So I incorporated like fashion. So me and my nephew like to make our own clothes. And I, I said how that was such a great bonding experience because, you know, uh, me and my sister have a big age gap. So my nephew was born when I was eight. So he was more like a little brother to me, not like my nephew. So I think that's the two main things. Really just work on your pace. Um, take deep breaths. <laughs> I'm doing a bad job because I speak <laughs> very quickly. And that's, that's what we had to work on. <laughs> That's like the one thing that I really had to work on was pace. I think yeah. when you're like, blah, 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 they're like, okay, this kid, you know, studied these answers for three, four hours because he's just saying it so fast. But yes. pace and uh, make it personal. Awesome. Now we have another question. So how did you cope leaving your friends and family to pursue your goals? That's a very, <laughs> very relatable question for me. Um, so one of the reasons why it took me three tries was because I was so, so like, like sought, and I was so like convinced that I was going to get into Canadian dental school. Um, but if you really think about it, your closest friends, your closest family, they want to see you do your best, right? They will always be there. They will always understand that your goals come first because you are only in control of your own life. So once you kind of get over that, I know it sucks. Trust me. I'm 28. I uh, was actually lucky to, you know, live at home uh, during all of this, not paying rent. So I'm very close to my mother and my father and Rex. Rex is my, my dog. <laughs> um, but at some point, you really realize, shoot, I need to get my stuff together. You know, this is the only way. This is the opportunity that God gave to me. Like, it has to get done. It has to get done. And it's just a tough reality. It is a very tough reality. It, it does suck, you know, moving to the States and living alone. It does suck. Days like this where I come home at 8 p.m. and I open my lock and then it's like pitch black in here. Nobody's here and it's quiet. Oh, it what do we suck. remember? Hmm? Be, grateful. <laughs> Be grateful. Exactly. And also, once you get into dental school, it, it flies by. I can't believe I'm like, I'm almost on first year, essentially. But yeah, you get so busy. But then also remember, like, we have technology, you can FaceTime, you can Zoom, you see your parents, you can see your parents and your friends every day if you had to. Yeah, not physically, but at least this is better um, than nothing at all, right? And, um, and it also makes it that much better when you go home. So always think about that, you have something to like, look forward to. See your family, see your parents, see your spouse. <laughs> 
The other question we have is, what is the interview style at NYU? I think you kind of talked over this, but maybe. One-on-one, uh, one-on-one, one on one, very relaxed. Do not be stressed. And everyone at NYU, so that's one of the main things I love about this school. I know there's so much said about NYU, uh, but from my experience, it's a really good school. Um, it is not cutthroat. You will definitely meet... In every, in every dental school, you will meet those gunners. You will meet those kids that, you know, will step on over their kids to get a good mark. But 99% is an amazing community. Um, going back to the interview process, like I said, it's two parts. It's actually an all day thing. It was very tiring. So they kind of put you in a like student panel. You meet the D2s, some D2s and D3s and D4s. That's where you can kind of like get the dirt about NYU because there's no one really watching. Um, and then after that, they put you in a waiting room. You do your little interview with um, a doctor. You get a nice little like 10 minute break. And then you do an interview with an admissions person. Like I said, both very, if you just Google top dental interview questions, those were all the questions NYU asked. Nothing, cur no curveballs, except the ethical question that I had to talk about. Next is, um, what would be good attire for online interviews? Uh, definitely formal attire. Uh, guys, dress shirt, tie, if you want to throw on a nice little, you know, sport jacket, definitely. Uh, girls, conservative for sure. You know, you could do a button up. Um, Blazer. Blazers, yep. No. But definitely dress to impress. Well, well. That was one of the main things yes. that I hated. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> because especially at NYU there are a lot of um, uh, old school doctors and they uh, are judgmental for sure yeah. um, cover any tattoos if you guys have tattoos that's where piercings or anything take off your piercings yes yeah. shave look clean look professional once you get like, in you can yeah. do whatever. <laughs> okay awesome so Madamita says, you mentioned that you only got in during your third cycle of reapplying. What did you do during that time? How did you motivate yourself to put, uh, and what were your, some of the things that you felt at that time? Have you ever faced self-doubt? I was yeah. on, I, I remember this. <laughs> yes, this was a, a very like emotional question because I, like, I, I had to speak about it, right? And I knew it was going to come up because I, yes. I took five years off. Um, first year almost two years. I'm not gonna lie. I just, I kind of just relaxed. U of T was very hard. It was very stressful. I did go through that self-doubt. I call it U of tears for a reason. Um, so I kind of just worked. Uh, I continued to shadow just to keep my interest in check, just to make sure that, you know, I, that was something that I wanted to do. And then, you know, when you really, when you're working at a job where, you know, Can it's you like, guys... sorry. Yeah, I think you froze. Oh, sorry. Sorry, froze. I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you want to maybe go over that again? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so that was something very touchy for me because it was something that I had to talk about. Um, first two years when I graduated, uh, I kind of just took my own self time for my mental health because like I said, I did not have the greatest experience uh, in my undergrad and it did put a lot of self doubts. Um, you guys know how it is when, when, when you get to university after high school, you're like, oh my goodness, I had all these good grades in high school. And then you get to university and it's a totally different ballgame, right? Um, so those first two years, I kind of just had to relax, you know, save my money, prepare and continue to shadow just to keep my interest in check. That uh, third year is when I started to apply. I didn't really take it crazy seriously um because i didn't know how intense it was so i just wrote my dts my dts were just literally at the like the cut line so i don't know if you guys know but a lot of schools will not look if you're under 16 in any section um i had like all like 16s and 17s i applied to all the canadian ones didn't get in and i was like ah oh, i don't know if i want to go to the Amer like america then i have to talk to my like like my parents i have to talk to cousins friends I realized this was something that I really wanted to do. So I reapplied the second year to American schools. I did not retake my DAT because I did not want to. Uh, studying for that, you guys know it's, it's a pain, but at least after that, you don't have to study for a Saturday test till you do the boards. Um, continued my shadowing. Uh, I was actually lucky. So my one best friend, he actually graduated from York too. Um, 
he was a like a, like uh he was the stud of our class so he was the one that he got into dental school in his third year of undergrad at U Umin, uh, Minnesota. Uh, did the four years and he's actually completing his perio residency now. But at that time, he came back to Canada to work for a bit. And that's where I really took advantage because it's my best friend. You know, I can get to see what a dentist is like on a personable level because I know how he is. So now I can see how he is in clinic. So I really took advantage of that. I went every day um, after work and I would shadow. I didn't get in. I didn't get I got ghosted by everybody, no interviews, nothing. And that's where I realized, okay, um, oh, sorry. And at that same time, I was also at York. So this is where I met like Gazelle. I had to take physics, I had to take English, there are a couple of things, um, and biochem, I think. So I was, yeah, I was in school, uh, I was at work, I was still shadowing, didn't get in. Um, I got pretty good grades at York. So it kind of pushed me up to, like I said, 3.3. .3 um and then I'm like okay I took an in-depth look at each school I'm like okay my GPA is around there you know my experience is around there my volunteering is around there it has to be my DAT so we took my DATs I really studied I invested um I used boot camp and they were really good um I used that I scored pretty well and then yeah got in so it's it's really all about how much you love it and when you do love something like that, you're, you're willing to do anything, so. Do you want to maybe that. talk about the time where you had self-doubt? Oh. Our, our long text message. <laughs> yeah, so in between like applying for the second and third year, you know, after the second rejection and, you know, spending all that money and all the preparation, I did doubt myself. I was like, you know, this is not career for me. You know, clearly I don't have the stats. It's not enough um but it's not that it's it's just in human nature to doubt yourself once you fail but failure is not a failure failure is a lesson right you learn what you did wrong um gazelle has been with me throughout everything so she's no she knows my application like the back of her hand right she's so involved in the community she knows the stats of the schools what's needed right so she, we really had this conversation and she was saying how you know your stats are there you just need to retake the dat you will get in she always hammered it in my head that i would get in and like I said, it's natural for you to doubt yourself in a moment of unclarity and in a moment of, let's say, fa uh, uh, failure. But like I said, it's just showing you what you need to do. And you just need to really push through that. And a lot of it is, again, be grateful for where you are in your life. Every single time you guys doubt it, be grateful. And um you know, uh, if you're religious, pray. That was something that was that really helped me in terms of my self doubt. I would pray at night. You know, just thank God for waking me up another day. Thank you for surrounding me with such great people. Thank you for allowing me to be in you know a top educated program and to pursue a doctorate uh, as my career. Um, but when you if you are feeling that self doubt, the main thing is don't let it continue to accumulate. You succeeded throughout your entire life, but it took a long time. It took a lot of steps, right? You just have to push past that. Yeah, even just thinking back of that time when I would kind of comfort you and support you. And it, it still gets me emotional to this day, just thinking about how far you came and you wanted to give up at the last second. And I just like, I had to push you because I know you had so much potential and even when you did get the acceptance to NYU and you were, you were going to reject it. Remember that? Yeah. You so were going to reject NYU. And I was full on just telling him, like, you are getting accepted to the best school in yeah. America. The top 10 like percent of dentists are from it. You cannot give that. And there was X, Y, and Z reasons. But I just wanted to show my support. Not just, you know, say you have to go to the school, but I wanted to show my support. Um, and just, you know, the, from when I first met you back in like 2016, 2017. So now it's just amazing. I'm so proud of this guy and what he's done. Like I just, I'm really, really proud. And it makes me emotional. So I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> You're the best, man. I'm so grateful for you. 
um, just based on like what Gazelle said, um, there's going to be a lot of things that come up, guys. Emotions are going to run through you when you get accepted. So just like a little background, like I just, I, I was going to reject NYU because it was so expensive. Um, if you guys have all applied to NYU and you guys are kind of on the fence because of the tuition, uh, don't let that ever be a factor. So I had to have, a, I actually spoke to a lot of dentists that I shadowed. And if this is something that you love, money comes, money goes is the main thing that you need to know. Um, you know, I, I think everybody here knows that this, this, this career pays, pays pretty well. That should not be the main reason you're here. Um, but also that it should not be the main reason you do not want to go to a specific school because experiences, um, experiences are so invaluable that, you know, I may be 700, 600 K in debt by the end of it, but I am a hundred percent certain that I will be a lot more prepared than a lot of other dental students. Uh, just like a little comparison. I've already gone through class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, and complex onlay preps and um, and uh, conservative preps. So I'm, I'm on my seventh cavity preparation already. And a lot of dental schools are just starting their class one preps. Um, but yes, that's just like, like I said, experiences are very valuable. Um, do not let tuition ever scare you if you're applying this year, if you're applying next year, because money comes, money goes, and there will always be a way, especially if you're always happy and grateful for everything you do. Awesome. So just a few more questions. We'll get through them. Uh, what's been the biggest challenge so far as a D1? Time management. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it hits the ground running. And you guys are going to ask the same question to uh, D1 students across the globe. It is time management. I have 13 courses that I'm doing this semester and there's not like baby courses. Uh, so background neuro, pharmacology, pathology, epidemiology, single tooth restoration, <laughs> clinic. You guys get the point. Um, the main thing is you guys need to use your schedules very wisely, find a study habit that works for you and prioritize. So a lot of the dental school game is prioritizing and catching up. So you may find that you have three exams in the same week, three, four exams in the same week. You kind of have to prioritize the first one, throw everything else on the side. And then once that one's done, you pull up the next one and you, so on and so forth. Um, definitely, that is the hardest thing uh, of D1 is just getting accustomed to all the courses. Because in undergrad, you guys choose the courses. You can choose bird courses. You choose what you need to take. They give you your schedule, whether you like it or not. Um, they may give you a 6 to 10 p.m. lab session and now you're, you're all you're in school all day from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And you need to figure out how to study when you're going to study. That is definitely the hardest thing. Other than that, once you get into your groove, once you get into your um, your schedule, it's it's all easy. And that's where time just flies by. And did you take any new courses in order to get new recommend uh, letters of recommendations from professors? Yeah, so because I like I graduated in like 2016 from U of T, I didn't really feel comfortable asking those profs because it was so long. Um, it was all the prereq courses that I did at York. Uh, so physics, English, and biochem, those are the ones that I use my letters of recommendation. So I've done that. <laughs> William asks, how many hours of sleep do you get a night on average? Uh, so here's the thing. It's, it's, um, it, it really varies. Uh, some, I think... When I wasn't really accustomed and I didn't have my, like my time management down, I was sleeping only like four hours. Maybe I was studying, but I was very, I was studying very inefficiently. Also, another thing while it's at the top of my head, be open to changing your study habits because of how much um, the course load is going to be. So uh, background, my, my study habits were I would sit down, look at a lecture and literally memorize word after word understanding is the most important thing now um so please 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 be open to changing your study habits because you will fall behind very quickly you will notice that you cannot study these lectures at the same pace um 
I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but I just I need to give this information. Yeah, to you for sure. Um, sure be open to that. Yes. Um, someone says, do you recommend for guys to completely shave their beards or perhaps aligning it? I would say shave completely. Uh, from all the guys that I've seen, it was complete shaven. Um, you just don't want to risk it. You might get an interviewer who's very old school and you may have a nice little lined up beard. It's all trim, but he doesn't like facial hair. And that could be your, that could be an acceptance or a denial. Yeah. So definitely. Hold on says, can you briefly talk about, uh, how you finance your tuition? Also, did you take the American DAT the second time around? Uh, so I have a student line of a professional student line of credit under my name. Um, so I don't know if you guys have started looking into the finances. This is, that's another, like, um, uh, another difficult kind of thing you need to figure out because Canadian banks will only give you as much as, uh, Canadian dental schools are worth. So it's about 350,000, depending if you can get a cosigner. Some of them will only give you 250 to 300. So please, please be very aware of that. So I have that really uh, covering my first and second year. Um, my dad, and my, well, my parents are just helping me a little bit with like living costs and then um, everything else, the remainder, I'm either going to have to get a loan out here uh, because I have family out here who can co-sign for me. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to have to do because there's like 300K that I have to account for. Um, and then in terms of the DAT, yes, I took the American DAT. Um, from my experience, I kind of found it easier. Uh, it just sucks because there's so many extra court, I like, like subjects. So you have to take Orgo, you got to do math. Um, but I also find that because of that, it's easier. So you don't really have, because the Canadian one's like, it's like, what is it, natural sciences? And then reading, right? And reading then, perceptual, yeah. yeah. You get less like bio and chem, so if you're not really strong at bio, you won't have as many on the American. So that's just my little two cents. Okay, um, do you guys have any more interview questions for Casey? Um, I know there's some questions that you guys have regarding schools and DET prep. I will show his um, Instagram, well, I think it's showed it previously but it's cold case file so if you want to dm him any you know in-depth questions for sure if you any have if you have any interview questions this will be your kind of last chance before we get going um i email in the chat if you guys want to email me as well yeah i can um, email him there you go. Also, yeah william so yeah i i kind of like went off topic but yeah I, some hours some days is four hours some days i'll get a nice six seven hours yeah. um like I said, once you get into the group, you'll start realizing which courses you don't need to go to for lectures because the prof does a pretty good job of, you know, having good slides. So that's kind of where you like pick and choose. Hey, do I need to go to this class? Can I get a couple hours extra of sleep? But you'll, you'll get your good sleep. You guys, um, don't be scared. It's not all studying. I go out and party. I, you know, <laughs> I hang out with friends. Um, don't worry. It's a balance. Yeah, it's a balance. For sure. Okay, I don't think we have any more questions. So I'm just gonna, do you have any maybe last tips, tricks, anything <laughs> to send off our students? <laughs> yes, uh, stay off of SDN in terms of keeping up how, the, how many interviews are being sent out. That was one thing that really stressed me out and got me upset that I wasn't getting interviews. Um, relax enjoy the process this is the fun part guys and I, it's funny because <laughs> another d1 student told me this uh before i got in and i was like wow this is just a stupid tip what do you mean um yeah this is the fun part you know you're it's it's like a tryout you're trying to make the team um there's no doubt in my mind that each and every one of you are going to get in uh just relax and enjoy the process definitely um use gazelle number one tip <laughs> reach out to her uh, I know she's busy but definitely definitely she knows what she's talking about guys it's uh it's something that i'm so so adamant on and i still tell other students reach out to her um other than that be yourself i know a little little cliche be yourself on the interview please do not try to look what an ideal um dental student is uh 
ask questions during the interview. They will always say, hey, do you guys have any questions for us? Asking questions shows how that shows that you're interested in the school. Um, so if you guys want a little, I had a couple good ones. So the first one that I asked uh, was, how has NYU helped you in terms of your professional aspirations? That's how, I, that's what I asked the, I asked both the um, admissions person and the uh, professor. Uh, also, yeah, I remember we went, we talked about what to ask them afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there was a question, remember, I, I forget what it was, but the lady was like surprised that you asked that. Yeah. Do you remember? Was that one, that was one yeah. Question. Yeah, yeah. And then I kind of asked, like, what, what does your school look for in a, in a, in a dental student? Um, but there, again, like I said, there's a lot on Reddit, SDN. If you guys search that, there are a lot of questions that they'll give you. Use those resources, but also just make sure it doesn't trip you out because you're waiting for an interview. Awesome. If you guys have anything, I just email me, message me on, on Instagram. Um, this is just like my, I love, I love trying to help, um, students because I knew, I know how you guys feel and I know how stressful it is. Um, so please don't be afraid, like hit me up. Um, and if I don't have an answer for you, I have 380 other D1 <laughs> students that I could ask for class information. So, for sure. Great. So I sent out the volunteer forms both on YouTube and on Zoom. Please fill that out as soon as you possible, like as soon as possible. Fill that out. Um, again, if you have any more questions for Casey, feel free to message him. If you have any questions for me, feel free to message me on Instagram, the pre dental YU. Um, don't forget to sign up for our other events, which is, you know, the mock interviews, the um, tomorrow we have another workshop at 7 p.m. Definitely join that. Um, anything else? Our dental shadowing, that's on the 22nd. We have so many great events this year for you guys. So definitely hit those, you know, follow those events. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Nothing? No? <laughs> so I'm going to end the uh, YouTube live. If you guys want to maybe um, ask Casey any questions verbally, I'm going to stop the live stream. And we'll just have maybe a few more minutes if Casey, if you're able to stay for a few more minutes, just to yeah. answer any questions. Awesome. Yeah, Great. Sure. So yeah. thank you everyone for watching. I'm going to end our YouTube live and come on to Zoom if you want to ask questions. You're on YouTube live this, this whole time? Yeah. <laughs>